Europe had an important visitor this week, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He was on a three-day trip to Paris. It was less of a state visit, more of an apology tour for the AUKUS snub. The question is, did it work? You could say Blinken was a perfect man for this job. He studied in France. He speaks fluent French. He calls Paris his second home. That French connection seemed to have worked. America and France have committed to mending ties. Things aren't back to normal. But the rhetoric of backstabbing and betrayals has definitely cooled down. Blinken met with President Emmanuel Macron and the French Foreign Minister. They discussed the AUKUS deal and Indo-Pacific strategies. There was one major consensus, that deals like AUKUS should not replace NATO commitments. Blinken later called the meeting positive and productive. The, the conversations we've had just uh, in the last 24 hours were very positive, very productive, and reflect a lot of important work that's in progress. Work that uh, was tasked by, uh, by President Biden and President Macron to, as I say, deepen consultations, deepen cooperation, uh, deepen uh, coordination across a range of issues that make a, a real difference for, um, for citizens of France and citizens of the United States. That's a rosy assessment by Blinken. Does France agree? Well, it does, but not in as many words. The French envoy has been asked to return to Australia. Prime Minister Scott Morrison welcomed the decision. He says the ties between Australia and France are bigger than a defence contract. See, the Australia-France relationship is bigger than a contract. And France's um, presence and significance and influence in the Indo-Pacific isn't about a contract. It's about the fact that they have an actual presence here. Uh, in the Indo-Pacific, that they have a long-standing commitment and uh, work with Australia across a whole range of different issues. I mean, we have other defence contracts with France. We have about $32 billion worth of contracts with French, Euro not just French, but uh, European uh, contractors. Now, this is a tricky situation for France. Their rebellion definitely shook the Americans. Macron showed Biden that he is no pushover, but that was pretty much it. Some strong statements, some diplomatic drama, but nothing concrete, no strategic realignments. This is a crucial period for the European Union. Angela Merkel is retiring and President Macron wants to take her place. He wants to implement his grand vision for Europe, hence the balancing act. Macron and Biden will be meeting at the G20 summit in Rome this month. Both leaders are hoping to bury the hatchet once and for all. I think it's important that China stays in multilateral relations, that we keep working to have a Europe that contributes to build an area of peace and safety in the Indo-Pacific, which is at the heart of our strategy and which was made public a few weeks ago. Because we had disagreements and we can put everything on the table. In this regard, we have convergence points with the USA and we also might have differences. And it is important that Europe speaks with a voice that is its own. Here's another reason for the patch-up. France has clinched a new defence deal. It will supply three warships to Greece for three and a half billion dollars. Now, this is not about the money. France lost 40 billion dollars with the AUKUS deal. This agreement with Greece won't make up for that, just three and a half billion, but it's definitely a face saver. That's because Greece is discussing a defense cooperation agreement with America. In the middle of those talks, Athens has signed a deal with France. President Macron will count this as a small victory, and Joe Biden will be more than happy to give him that. The AUKUS fallout goes beyond just four countries. For example, where does it leave the transatlantic partnership? What happens to Macron's vision for a European defense plan? The fact is, France's reach is exceeding its grasp. And President Macron realizes this. His plans for Europe may be valid, but not at the cost of transatlantic ties. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.